this has completely changed the way we camp. Hey everybody, I'm Mike. And I'm Susan and we are RV Blogger. And now that we can tow the Jeep behind the A, <laughs> our camping lifestyle has completely changed. Yeah. We have the ability to explore, to travel, to go to the grocery store, to go out to dinner. We are not sedentary once we reach our campground. Absolutely. And when we camped in our Class C RV, you know, even though it's only 24 feet long, it was convenient to use it as our only vehicle. Right. But if we wanted to leave the campground, we would have to, you know, unhook the sewer, water, electric. Put in the chairs, pack put up in some the stuff. patio mat. And it was fine to drive around. We drove that thing everywhere. Everywhere. And we did fine with it. But mm -hmm. really, it's been a game changer now having the Class A and being able to tow the A. Right. And the whole reason we can do that now not only is because the Class A can tow more, but we got our Blue Ox tow bar, which has really, really been right. fantastic. It's made all the difference for us. So we're gonna take a few minutes and show you how we hook up our Jeep to the Class A with our tow bar. And then at the end of the video, we'll share a few tips that we've learned along the way yeah. because- Very important tips. <laughs> it's also changed the way we drive. Absolutely. <laughs> so there's been a few, uh, a few really, uh, big things that we've learned so we'll share all that at the end of the video but right now let's go check out how we hook this baby up So we decided to go with a blue ox tow bar because I did a lot of research out there there are a lot of good tow bars out on the market, but we know several people that have Blue Ox tow bars and they're extremely happy with them. They perform very well. We haven't heard of really any negatives about them at all. But the biggest reason that we decided to go with Blue Ox is because we could get a 10,000 pound tow bar, which is way more than we need to tow our two door Jeep Wrangler. This thing weighs 4,250 pounds. 10,000 pound tow bar is more than enough. But if we ever decide to upgrade and get a four-door Jeep or a heavier car that we would want to tow behind us, our tow bar can handle that in the future. So we have our tow bar always installed and it comes with a nice little cover, which we always use. I mean, last night it poured here. So the, you know, the cover keeps the tow bar dry. Plus when we're out and about and we're, if we're driving around and the Jeep's not connected for any reason, this will help keep all of the components clean. It'll keep you know road dirt and dust and debris from building up on the arms, which you want to avoid that if you can. So not only does the Blue Ox cover cover our tow bar and keep it nice and safe, but it's a good, good little knee pad for me, so I'm not <laughs> leaning out here on the parking lot now. You know, Susan just pulled up the Jeep, and so you want to just get your car as you know straight as you can, and it's important that it's as level as possible, also. You might have to buy a little hitch adapter, which will come out of the back of your RV and then lower or raise where your hitch plugs into your RV hitch. We had to lower ours about two inches to make sure the tow bars were as flat as possible from the A to the Jeep. Now we're gonna hook up our tow arms to our Jeep. Now one thing to note, before you do anything with the tow kit, you have to get what's called a base plate installed onto your vehicle. Blue Ox makes base plates for just about every vehicle imaginable. So we bought a cost, or a specific base plate for our Jeep Wrangler. And uh, we'll give you some tips at the end of the video about how we got this installed and why we think we did the right thing with it. But um, that has to be installed on your vehicle. And then you're gonna attach your tow bar arms to the base plate. Now when Blue Ox sends out your base plate, these pins lock into place and I like to take mine off and keep them stowed, you know, in the RV when we're not towing because I think people could just walk up and steal this. There's no way for this to lock into place. And if somebody steals one of these, then we're in trouble. We don't have any extras. So they do come with the base plate. You just pop them in and turn them into place and they snap right in and there you go. Now this other piece that's on here, this is the pin that's gonna connect the tow bar to the Jeep. And Blue Ox actually supplies 
pin sets that you can buy that are locking. And you, we actually have a larger pin to connect the tow bar to the A, and then we have a pin for each arm that connects to the Jeep, and they all lock, and they're all keyed alike. So it's very, very convenient that way. So we'll go ahead and pop these in and go ahead and get the tow arms connected. So this is really simple. I mean, it's just, I mean, it just pivots very easily and then you put them down and just extend them where you need them to go. Yikes, be careful you don't pinch your finger. Some guys like to wear gloves in case so they don't pinch their fingers. All right, now that's locked on there. And there's also these rubber caps that you can put on the end. So it keeps water out of the lock. It'll keep it from rusting and all that stuff. So we like to use those. These are clearly marked so you know which way's up so you don't get it upside down by mistake. Ah! I'm trying to do this so you guys can see it. I'm a little sloppy here. There we go. So that's it. So now we're connected from the Jeep to the Class A. Now the next thing to do is hook up our safety cables. These are pretty heavy cables and uh, Blue Ox does supply these also when you buy their tow bar so you save some money that way. And basically what you want to do is just hook these from the Jeep to the RV. These are in case something happens to the tow bar and it breaks, at least the, you know, you're not going to lose your Jeep. This will keep you connected. And uh, Blue Ox recommends that they, you hook them up to the Jeep and then you go under your tow bar and you do crisscross them. So I'm going to go to this side to make my connection. And then I'll just do the opposite on the other side. That's it, it's really pretty simple. Now the next piece that we have to connect is underneath Susan. <laughs> Which one, this one? No, the lights. Okay. So the light piece, since this is a Blue Ox product also, this connects into the base plate perfectly. And there's a little tab on it right here. And you wanna make sure that's up because on the bottom of the lid, there's also a little tab that catches it right here. And that makes sure that this doesn't pull out. So it's important that you put it in the right way. And then on the other end, we're not so lucky. There is a big tab here and the cap from our RV is supposed to catch it, but there's a little bit of too much distance. And I always worry about my cable pulling out. So. Just be sure when you install it, you know, you get it in there good and tight and the cap goes behind that little pin and that'll help hold it into place. Finally, we have our fail safe. This is the breakaway cable. And so if every single thing fails, either the tow bar falls off the back of the class A or the Jeep becomes completely disconnected somehow, this will pull a pin on the front of the base plate and that will automatically engage the brakes on the Jeep so we don't have a runaway Jeep going down the road. It will automatically break and stop itself. Now this goes from the front of the tow bar to this breakaway pin. And then you're supposed to be able to attach this somewhere on your RV other than your whole entire tow assembly. Because if your tow assembly fails, you don't want everything dragging down the road together. You want this to be able to be part of your RV so it'll pull the pin and stop the Jeep we don't have anywhere to attach it to. So for now, I'm just attaching it to my tow bar, but we need to figure out a way to get it attached to some other part of the RV. So in the case of a catastrophic failure, the Jeep will stop. And maybe some people have had experience with this in the past yeah. and they may have an idea. Yeah, I've seen other videos where people have this like zip tied to somewhere underneath of their RV. I'm not really sure that's safe because I'm not sure a zip tie is strong enough it, it might break and then this won't pull the pin out i don't really know mm -hmm. but if you have any ideas on how to do it we'd love to hear maybe put them in the comments below because lots of people read the comments and then we could all learn Help from each, each other. other that way right yeah so for now i just hook this up onto the tow kit and that's about it 
So now that we have everything set up, the next step for us is we put our Jeep into neutral and then I manually just roll it backwards. And the reason we do that is we need at least one of these arms to lock into place. So the arms have to be fully extended while you're towing. And so we just manually back our Jeep up. Right. We just put ours in neutral and I can literally just push it mm -hmm. and it'll roll. And then the nice thing with Blue Ox tow bars is only one of these bars has to lock to be able to start towing. Mm -hmm. Now, once one of the bars locks, then I'll drive ahead 50 or 100 feet. Susan will usually walk alongside and she'll hear the second bar click. And mm -hmm. we know both bars are fully extended and locked into place. And that little arm, yeah, that clicks, that moves. That's what. That's how you know, to go right. click, click. Yes. The other really great thing about Blue Ox tow bars is these are non-binding levers. So when you get to your destination and you have to release these tow bars, if you don't have this clip on here, then it can be really, really tough to unlock the tow bar so that you can disconnect it from your vehicle. Um, Blue Ox has a special lock on each side that easily releases. It's, they've been really, really terrific. We haven't had any problems with that at all. So anyway, we'll put the Jeep in neutral. I'll push it back and you can see how one of the tow bars locks into place. So we didn't take the time to show you how we put our Jeep in neutral. Uh, because you might not be towing a Jeep or you might have a different year Jeep, um, just refer to your owner's manual. You can really mess your vehicle up if you don't put it into neutral correctly to flat tow it. Um, so it's not hard. They all just have their own little you know, way of doing it and we don't want to show you our way when your way might be different. So now that we're in neutral though, it's super easy. I mean, I can easily just push the Jeep back and it locked into place. Yep, that pin over there. Yep. Now, before we drive down the road at all and get the second arm to click into place, this is when actually Susan will stand behind the Jeep. I'll jump in the motorhome and we'll test the brakes and we'll test the blinkers. Now, one question people have is, do you need to have your braking system installed before you test the lights to make sure they all work? In our case, the answer is no, because the blue cable that's connected here is what controls the lights. The braking system is independent. It does not control any of the braking lights on the Jeep. We're gonna go ahead and get that installed real quickly too, and I can show you how that works. So we got the Blue Ox Patriot 3 braking system with our Jeep. A couple things that I really like about it. First of all, it's super lightweight. It hardly weighs anything at all. So it's easy to pull it out of the Jeep and stow it in the back compartment of the RV. Second of all, it just plugs into a cigarette lighter. It's a very simple setup. It actually has a pendulum inside of it. So the way it works is when I hit the brakes on the motorhome, this pendulum will swing forward. That makes the con electrical connection that allows the brake to apply onto the brake pedal. This just fits between the seat and the brake pedal. And I'll show you how it installs inside. But another big advantage to having a setup like this is that since we don't have a braking system installed specifically in this vehicle, once again, if we decide to trade up and get a bigger Jeep or a different vehicle to tow behind us, this goes with it. So I can just use it in our next vehicle. Or if I want to tow a different vehicle or two vehicles, you know, some people have two trucks that they tow, you can pull this out and use it in either vehicle. So nice benefit there. So basically there's just two wires that have to plug into this. This, the cigarette lighter plug just plugs into a cigarette lighter 12 volt that we had installed. And then there's another breakaway that, remember I showed you the breakaway from the base plate, the other end of that plugs into here. So if anything catastrophic happens, this will apply the brake and the Jeep will stop. So once you have your braking system installed and really all it is, you just sit it in here hook up the cigarette lighter, hook up the breakaway cable and clamp the foot onto the brake pedal up front. You hit the power button and then you hit your setup button. And it'll sort of calibrate itself for your brake pedal. So that's it, it's really that simple. Typically Mike and I are on our phones talking to one another, but because I'm recording in this one, I'm gonna have to give him a good old thumbs up to let him know that brake lights are working and the left and the right blinker are working. 
Now he's going to pull forward. We're going to monitor the arm of the ox and make sure that our wheels are all for moving safely. And it clicked and the wheels are perfect. Now some really good tips about getting your tow bar all set up and together are the first thing we did is we did not install the base plate or do the electrical wiring ourselves. We, as you guys know, we live in Maryland. We took our Jeep to Leo's RV right. and um, had them install the base plate for us and do all the wiring. And I'm super glad that we did. Mm -hmm. You know, not only did they install the base plate, but they also hooked up the wires so that we can plug in our braking system. So they ran the wires, so they end up underneath the driver's seat, um, the breakaway wire plus the cigarettes lighter style 12 right. volt is all there for us. And it's all neat and tidy too. It is. <laughs> they did neat, a really good job. Tidy. When you run these wires, you have to run from the front of the Jeep all the way through the frame mm -hmm. to the back of the Jeep to the taillights. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they did all that stuff for us. I'm not great at that. And so, you know, and it's a big safety issue. So right. I just felt like having it professionally done. I feel much safer. Yeah, it, it was <laughs> not a good that you idea. couldn't have done it, but I could have, but it would have taken it forever. Was peace of mind. And I would not have ever known if it was really right. <laughs> right. I just would have been guessing a little. Um, but the other big thing is since we took it to them, I didn't realize this, but in Jeeps, when you put your Jeep in neutral, and many other cars are like this too, the accessories stay on right. and so uh, the braking mechanism uh, is is controlled by your battery that char you know that runs your jeep so if you drive a long distance you can actually wear your battery out mm -hmm. so they ran a secondary wire for us so that while we're driving the motorhome and towing the jeep the motorhome is actually charging the jeep battery at the same time right so that was a really really great mm -hmm. feature that we might not have known about. I wasn't aware of that. And if and since we had him install it for us, right. um, we really lucked out on that one. Mm -hmm. Another thing is we find that we have to plan where we're going a little more than we used to. Right, right. right. We would roll into a campground, no worries. And just show up. But, yeah. but now, you know, you're not going to be able to attach your tow vehicle to your RV in the campsite for sure, yeah. and maybe not even at the campground. You right. may have to find a parking lot nearby right. or a road that is not going to be, you know, it's preventing safe. people from traffic. Yeah, you have a you have a safe place to pull over. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not blocking traffic, and you want it to be as level as possible. And you want to take your time. Yeah. Don't rush. Yeah. Like if you're trying to do this at a campground and you've got people that are trying to leave and now you're kind of panicked and rushed, you could eliminate a step or yeah. Plug something in. We've wrong. been in that situation, and man, it's it's hectic. Yes. I mean, you're like, oh my god, I got to get this hooked up. These people are waiting for me. I got right. somebody blocked in. Right. And, and you ugh. don't want to panic. You don't want to rush. You want to take your time. Yeah. You know that. Or is just go to a different place important. and do it there. Or right. Just, you know, leave right. if you have to. Right. And, and so we'll look at Google Earth to find out. Yeah. If there's something nearby. Um, like a parking lot, a gas station. Right. If we have to get gas, we won't even hook up till we get to the gas station. Right. We'll definitely do that you know, first rather so. than hooking up and then unhooking. And you'll use Trip Wizard a lot all the time. I actually. do. We use Trip Wizard all the time. And the cool feature I really like about it is it has the Google ground view. So if we have a gas station planned where we want to stop or like in this case, the next campground that we head to, mm -hmm. we can't even on uh, disconnect at the campground no. so what i do is i go on to trip wizard and i use the google ground so you can see what's actually going on and then i can tell can we fit or not mm -hmm. and um, the next campground we're going to for example there's a gravel road that runs for about a half a mile that we have to go down mm -hmm. it's big enough that we can get our class a on it but i don't want to drive down that road with the jeep attached because of piece of gravel might pop up and dent the front of the Jeep or hit the windshield. Bust a light. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just do a little more planning that way to mm -hmm. make sure we have a great place to either connect the Jeep or disconnect the Jeep. And we have to look ahead to the next campground. Right. Again, it's a game changer in <laughs> so many ways. <laughs> <laughs> so we're awfully glad we have it though. It sure makes a huge oh, difference. Absolutely. So, 
Listen, in these process type videos, I do my best to catch every step. I might have missed something along the way. So right. in the comments down below, let us know if you have any questions. Right. Let us know how you, you hook tips? up your Jeep. What yeah. tips do you have? We'd right. love to hear. Yeah. We got a lot of folks that read the comments and we read them all too. Right. And so we can all learn from each other Absolutely. and make sure that we're all safe out there on the road. Right. So, <laughs> hey, for Mike and Susan, thanks for watching the video. Remember to leave your campsite cleaner than how you found it. And we'll see you guys in the next, next campground. Here you hold it. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> I'm just trying to grab it. You keep moving it away. <laughs> You're a pain in the butt today. You are. You are. <laughs>